Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to tonight's ceremony. To begin, I'd like to invite Barbara Weber, a past woman of distinction, to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Barbara. I would now like to recognize several special guests we have with us this evening. We have Jefferson County Legislator Mike Monagelli, uh, Councilman Joe Butler, Councilman Stephen Jennings, and Councilwoman Teresa Macaluso. We also have Senator Wright and his wife with us today. We also have some past women of distinction here, Barbara Weber and Lana Taylor. And now I'd like to invite Senator Richie Ford to offer some opening remarks. Good evening, and I'd like to thank all of you for being here tonight. The New York State Senate's Women of Distinction program celebrates women throughout our state's history who have made their mark, from Susan B. Anthony to Lucille Ball. It also honors those who are making a difference today in all of our communities. NASA astronaut Mae Jemison, one of the first women to travel to space, once said, never limit yourself because of the limited imagination of others. This theme of shooting stars describes all of the women we are recognizing here tonight, from teachers who have inspired countless students and those who make their life's mission to help those who are in need, to those who volunteer so many hours for worthwhile causes, and those who pave the way for other young women to follow in their footsteps. When it comes to improving our community, your contributions are really invaluable. To all the women of distinction here tonight, both past and present, Thank you for all your hard work, all that you do to make a difference in our community, and also for setting an example for others. And before we start our program, um, I have a few thank yous to make. Uh, all you have to do is maybe take a quick look around this beautiful library to see why this is, uh, this is where I picked to have this event. And you know, a library is really a magical place, whether you're a, a toddler or you're a senior. But those people who are in the community can only experience the magic of the library if they feel welcome to come in. So for many of you here, you may not know that the executive director um, is actually retiring and has served this community for the past 10 years. And so I, I don't see her right now. Barbara Wheeler, where are you hiding? Come on right up. So Barbara. I want to first thank you for always making us feel welcome. Um, this is just a, just a wonderful um, place and we appreciate you working to make this uh, event be such a special event for the women that we're honoring. And I uh, also wanted to present you with a resolution thanking you for your service here to the library and also the community. Thank you. And I would be remiss if I don't take a couple minutes uh, just to acknowledge the wonderful staff that I have. Um, Jess uh, Renzi, who is up here, but uh, Sarah, uh, Bonnie, uh, and all my staff who work so hard um, to put this event together. You know, I'm very fortunate to have such dedicated uh, hard workers who really um, do so much to make my events uh, a success for those that we really want to honor. So thank you for being here tonight. Thank you, Senator. Now we'd like to recognize our honorees. When your name is called, please wait till we've read your bio before you come to accept your certificate. We'll also have you take a photo. Our first nominee is Jane Backus. A retired English teacher after 25 years, Jane Backus taught seniors and sophomores at both Ogdensburg Free Academy and Mexico Academy in Central Schools. While at Mexico Academy, Jane was three times the advisor for Lost Intelligence, a chapter of National Honor Society. 
She is also especially proud of contributing to the design of the seniors or the school's Senior Quest program, a collegiate level initiative that allowed students to identify and research a topic of personal interest, culminating in a paper based on field experience and presented to a panel. Jane is also a past president and scholarship chairperson of MACS Dollars for Scholars, and under her leadership, the organization has been able to raise thousands of dollars for several hundred students in the community wishing to attend college. Jane is an extremely active member of her community, having served on the SUNY Oswego College Council for five years, editing the Mother Goose Nursery School newsletter, volunteering for the Mexico JROTC program, and cooking for the Mexico Methodist Church Monday meal. She is currently a sacristan and lector at St. Anne, Mother of Mary Catholic Church, and serves on U.S. Congressional Richard Hanna's Military Academy Review Committee. Jane's favorite and newest endeavor is sharing time with her granddaughter, Madeline. And Jane is the wife of Mark Backus and the mother of two sons, Michael and Robert. She was nominated by Roseanne Jarrett. Jane? Our next nominee is Eileen Burke. Eileen is the Executive Director of Renewal House of St. Lawrence County, a local nonprofit organization that assists victims of domestic violence and sexual assault. She is also an avid supporter of the No More campaign and highly involved in raising awareness and support for victims of domestic violence and sexual assault. Eileen also volunteers for the After Prom Committee at Potsdam High School and supports the Potsdam Booster Club. Eileen was nominated because she is an outgoing advocate for women and families affected by violent acts and is always accessible and approachable to her employees and volunteers. Eileen is a very dedicated wife and mother to two daughters. Eileen was nominated by Ashley Keyes. Eileen Burke. Our next is the Child Advocacy Center of Oswego County. The staff of the Child Advocacy Center of Oswego County does work both individually and collaboratively with children who have suffered physical or sexual abuse in their families. The staff works tirelessly to ensure that children who have suffered abuse are able to cope with their feelings, recover, and once again enjoy their childhood. They are constantly faced with the challenge of providing high quality services while overcoming the barriers of limited space, resources, and time. The staff freely gives of their time to several area churches and organizations and also volunteers with the trauma response team of Oswego County. They also perform training and community presentations that provide educational, child-friendly activities at various community events throughout the year. In 2012, the Greater Oswego Fulton Chamber of Commerce awarded them the Nonprofit of the Year. The staff was nominated due to the compassion they have for those that they serve and their resiliency in being able to deal with heartbreaking stories and challenges in the legal system on a daily basis. The staff consists of Stacy Austin Root, Melissa Baker, Melanie Proper, Carol Gazzatana, Tracy Henry, Amanda Capling, Noreen Cook, Sandy Delano, and Maureen McLean. And they were nominated by John DeRussi. I think we have a few of them here, or one. Our next nominee is Carrie Dam. Things can get better. This is a mantra that Carrie Dam shares with the mainly individuals and families she serves as Executive Director of the Child Advocacy Center of Oswego County. In this position, Carrie has used her compassionate demeanor and exemplary leadership skills to provide healing and comfort to children who have suffered physical or sexual abuse in their families. To better serve her clients, Carrie led the charge to add a CAC satellite office in Pulaski, making it easier for children and their families in the northern part of Oswego County to access the vital services provided by the CAC. In addition to working on behalf of children and families, Carrie is also a role model for the employees she oversees, inspiring them to also advocate for those in need. A graduate of Syracuse University, Carrie is extremely involved in her community and has also received numerous accolades for her willingness to help others, including the Greater Oswego Fulton Chamber of Commerce 2012 Nonprofit of the Year Award. She was also once named one of the top 100 most inspiring women by Girl Scouts of America. Carrie has one daughter, Kaylee, who is 14 years old, and she was also nominated by John DeRussi. 
That's Carrie Dam. Our next nominee is Virginia Davey. Virginia Davey works with children in crisis. As a teacher at the Children's Unit at the St. Lawrence Psychiatric Center, she helps children and teens who have been sexually abused, at risk of suicide, and with a range of psychiatric disorders. For 22 years, she has taught and advocated for thousands of children from across northern New York, working to help them keep up with their schoolwork while they receive mental health care. Her educational programs currently serve as a model for inpatient psychiatric programs across the state, showing how children can receive treatment while also ensuring young people get the comprehensive care they need to succeed in school. Virginia also serves as president of the Public Employees Federation Union at the Psych Center. While she learned that the office, when she learned that the Office of Mental Health was looking at closing some psychiatric facilities, she teamed with Senator Patty Ritchie to ensure that the young people she works with would continue to receive the kind of services they and their families need. As a member of the Save the Psychiatric Center Task Force, Virginia's efforts helped convince the state to designate the Psychiatric Center's Children's Unit as the Children's Behavioral Health Center of Excellence for the North Country. She was nominated by Dr. Elizabeth Chadwick Burns. That's our nominee, Virginia Davey. Our next nominee is Kelly Glasgow. When Kelly Glasgow isn't fulfilling her duties as a Branford Elementary Counselor, she's an extremely active member in the community. As a coordinator for the Kids Start program, Kelly is responsible for organizing donations for children in the area who are in need of supplies required to excel in the classroom. Kelly also has a hand in helping with Goodwill dinners, preparing Easter baskets for local children, and making sure that children who are less fortunate have access to warm clothing and food during vacations. Kelly also goes above and beyond to make sure children who want to play sports at school are able to get the proper equipment and registration fees necessary to participate. Kelly is married with two children, and she was nominated by Kim Terrell. That's Kelly Glasgow. You know, I think Kelly was unable to make it. I think maybe one of her two children actually got sick, so they were not able to be here. But we will make sure she gets that. Our next nominee is Michelle Hughes. While being a single mother can have its challenges, Michelle Hughes has always worked to overcome those challenges and succeed. Since moving to Oswego County nearly 30 years ago, she's been a dedicated member of the community in Pulaski. Michelle is a member of the Preservation and Restoration of Pulaski Committee, is a St. Baldrick's Cancer Research Benefit Volunteer, and a volunteer for the Pulaski Academy and Central Schools. Michelle also owns a Cut Above Full Service Salon where she is the master stylist. During her downtime, Michelle enjoys skiing and traveling, and she was nominated by Tina Heckman. It's Michelle Hughes. Our next nominee is Joanne Lazor. For more than 30 years, the village of Carthage has benefited from the dedication and love for community that is characteristic of Joanne. This loving wife and mother of six works at Carthage Augustinian Academy as a physical education instructor. Joanne, who sees every opportunity as a chance to grow, has organized sports activities for area children for more than 30 years. She always gives to others without expecting any sort of acclaim or reward. Joanne has been recognized for her dedication in a number of ways, being named Carthage Citizen of the Year in 1999 and the Dion Rumble Post 7227 Veterans of Foreign Affairs Volunteer of the Year in 1999. She was nominated by Elaine Avalon. That's Joanne Lazor. Our next nominee was Carrie McAvoy. In all that she does, it's evident how important health awareness is to Carrie McAvoy. 
from a career as a sexual health educator at North Country Prenatal Perinatal Council to volunteering annually at the First Frost AIDS Walk in Watertown, Carrie has made it her life's passion to improve the quality of health in our communities. It's a work that also includes educating students at Indian River Central School through the Teen AIDS Task Force and working with AIDS community resources in Watertown. A proud member, mother of a three-year-old daughter, Grace, Carrie also plays resident mom to the Carthage Augustinian Saints basketball teams, consisting of elementary and junior high students. Carrie has also served on the boards of both the SciTech Center and the AIDS Community Resources. In her free time, Carrie enjoys spending time with Grace and her family, as well as watching the Syracuse University men's basketball team. She was nominated by Jason McAvoy. Our nominee, Carrie. Our next nominee is Joanne Reed. Joanne Reed has been Michelle Freilich's assistant at the Freilich Group for 20 years. She volunteers her time at her church, United Methodist, as treasurer. She frequently gives up her time organizing fundraising events for her church, as well as the fire department in Three Mile Bay. She also runs Caring for Cats out of her home and takes in stray cats and kittens in need of special attention. Joanne is known for going above and beyond to help a neighbor or anyone in need and was nominated for doing so much for the community without any thought for herself. Joanne was nominated by Michelle Freilich. Joanne Reed. Our next nominee is Denise Simmons. For Denise Simmons, there's no place that feels more like home than the outdoors. The mother of three can often be found exploring nature right here in the North Country, fishing in our many rivers and streams, and hunting in the deep wildernesses. It's a way of life for Denise, who volunteers with Baldwinsville Ro Rod and Gun Club, Madison County Friends of the NRA, Onondaga County Federations of Sportsmen's Club, and has been involved with Central New York Friends of the NRA. In a world typically dominated by men in the past, Denise credits her grandfather and father for helping mold her appreciation for Mother Nature. Denise is thought by many to be a role model for other women with similar passions for the outdoors. In fact, to help attract more women to outdoor recreational opportunities, Denise serves as co-chair of the annual Women in Nature event that encourages women to take up hunting and fishing. Denise is known for advocating passionately for sportsmen's rights, regularly meeting with lawmakers and community leaders to stand up for issues impacting outdoor recreation. In her spare time, you guessed it, Denise can be found outside. She was nominated by Stephen Wawelko. Please give applause for Denise Simmons. Our next nominee is Roxanne Stewart. As a teacher, Roxanne Stewart helped mold the minds of countless children in her native Fulton. So dedicated was Roxanne that she even created an entire curriculum on the history of her hometown. Tying education with an appreciation of home is one of Roxanne's many legacies, but it's what she's done since retiring from the education field that has helped create change and better the lives of many in our community. Through her position as president of the resident council at Michaud Resident Health Services, Roxanne has become a tireless advocate pushing for better living conditions for nursing facilities. Roxanne has spearheaded campaigns to the president along with many state and local officials pushing for a better life for the elderly. Despite dealing with the challenges presented by multiple sclerosis, Roxanne has worked tirelessly to better her community. Seen as a disability to some, Roxanne has never allowed that perceived setback to slow her down or stop her from making life better for others. Through her decades of selflessness, Roxanne has proven an inspiration to genera generations in her beloved Fulton. Roxanne was nominated by Deanne Elder. It's Roxanne Stewart. Our next nominee is Imogene Wager. 
Emma Jean Wager and her husband were part of the team that founded the St. Lawrence Valley Chapter of the National Alliance for the Mentally Ill, a small all-volunteer organization that helped improve the lives of those living with mental illness and their families. Imogene has served on the executive board and chaired different committees that helped organize parties and picnics for the residents of the St. Lawrence Psychiatric Center. These parties have become the once a month banana split Sundays, with Imogene and her husband purchasing the ingredients. Imogene has been recognized numerous times for her selflessness and in 2003 received the United Way of Northern New York Giving Award in 2003 for her compassion and dedication to improving the lives of the mentally ill and their families. Imogene was nominated by Lynn Matat. Imogene Wager. Our next nominee is the Reverend Brenda Weisenberg. A resident of Central Square, Reverend Brenda Weisenberg has long been involved with the foster care program that led to the adoption of her daughter. She serves on the board of directors for Oswego County Foster Parents, Central Square Pop Warner, Hastings Mallory PTO, Parish Community Preschool, and the Fort Brewerton Chamber of Commerce. Currently, Reverend Weisenberg is the owner of Affordable Business Solutions. She serves as assistant pastor at the Mexico Church of God, where she provides faith-based counseling programs and housing for abused young girls. In addition, she has also been instrumental in community food and clothing drives at the church. Reverend Weisenberg has also influenced and touched many through her sermons and radio testimonies. She is married and has one daughter. She was nominated by Dr. Ronald Russell. Russell. That's Reverend Brenda Weisenberg. Our next nominee is the Reverend Meredith Williams. A resident of Oswego, Reverend Meredith Williams is a shining example to her students, both old and new. She is continually sought out for her wisdom, insight, and compassion. Reverend Williams has touched many by sharing her experience of overcoming the untimely loss of her husband and child, as well as providing spiritual help to those in need. Reverend Williams assists in food drives, facilitates art club, Christian club, and is an active member of Positive Behavioral Interventions. She is a teacher, assistant pastor, provides security for the church, and is the owner of Trinity Art Studio. Reverend Williams counsels teens, provides art credit for students who are homeschooled, and produces as well as hosts radio programs covering all of central New York. Reverend Williams is a past recipient of Senator Ritchie's Golden Apple Award for Teaching Excellence. She is married with two children, and she was nominated by Dr. Ronald Russell. That's the Reverend Meredith Williams. Our next nominee is Susan C. Whitmer. A resident of Oswego, Susan's life has been dedicated to volunteering. Throughout her life, she has volunteered with Oswego Rotary, Rural Health Network of Oswego County, and Emergency Planning Committee for Oswego County, United Way Cayuga Community College, Oswego County Humane Society, Youth Soccer League, and High School Sports Boosters. She was instrumental in the Stuff a Bus Bookmobile, Stone Soup Canned Food Drive, Ronald McDonald House Collection, and Salvation Army Canned Food Drives. Susan is an outstanding role model whose commitment to excellence has been a critical element in the success of the Cayuga Community College, Rotary, and the community. She's encountered many obstacles and barriers. However, her diligent attitude never stopped her or the incredible impact she had on everyone she crossed paths with. Currently, Susan is the director of Fulton Operations, Cayuga Community College. She has one adult son. She was nominated by Wendy King, Vernon Tryon, M.C. King, Melanie Trexler, and Jean Unger. That's Susan C. Whitmer. Our next nominee is Teresa Wilson. 
Teresa is a woman who took a tragedy in her own life and turned it into a lesson that can help save others. A native of Oswego in 2012, Teresa suffered the loss of her youngest child, Victor Wilson, to synthetic drugs, which were purchased at a storefront. Since his death, Teresa has persevered without losing hope. She's the president and founder of the Victor Orlando Wilson Foundation, a nonprofit organization created in her son's memory that aims to assist and educate the public in an effort to make the community a safer place. In addition, Teresa's advocacy was also the catalyst behind comprehensive legislation addressing synthetic drugs in New York State. In addition to her work to halt the use of synthetic drugs, Teresa is also involved in a number of other community organizations, including Bridges Out of Poverty, Coach, Friends of the Oswego Public Library, WNET, Vineyard Church, and several others. For more than 20 years, Teresa has worked at Operation Oswego County, where she currently serves as administrative coordinator. She has been married since 1991, and in addition to Victor, is the mother of two daughters. She was nominated by Angela Colville. That's Teresa Wilson. Our next nominee is Lila Youngs. Lila is described as a woman who helps until the job is done, never asking for more than a thank you. A resident of Richville, Lila is extremely involved in her community, always working to making things better for those who live there. She's involved in a number of organizations, including the Council of Social Agencies, Cornell Cooperative Extension, Office of the Aging, 4-H, Cub Scouts, and many more. In addition, she has also worked to create a brighter future for the young people of our region by volunteering as a Brownie leader and a Sunday school teacher. Lila devotes much of her time to volunteer activities such as the RVFD Ladies Auxiliary, the Town of DeKalb Revitalization, and more. She also was a member of the Village's Playground Committee, working alongside others to build a new playground for the community. Currently, Lila serves as the Richville Free Library Manager. She is married to Bud Youngs and has four children. She was nominated by Donna Dietz and Linda Gilbo. That's Lila Youngs. This concludes tonight's ceremony. I would like to invite everyone to join the Senator in the room behind me for some refreshments. Also, I would like to ask all of our honorees to come forward. We'd like to have a group photo with you. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. <laughs> 